Good morning. Welcome to worship as we celebrate our foolishness. Yes. Oh, that, that really shut everyone up. Wow, that was pretty good. You know, the cross is the foolishness that we celebrate, isn't it? I mean, we are celebrating the reality of our God dying. And yet, we know there's so much more to that statement. So much more to the power of the cross. Let us open by singing our first hymn, hymn 427, In the Cross of Christ I Glory, verses 1 through 3. worship which is printed in your bulletin beginning on the middle of page three with the confession absolution in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit amen Amen. beloved in the lord let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto god our father beseeching him in the name of our lord jesus christ to grant us forgiveness our help is in the name of the lord I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. We pause in silent reflection on our sins as we stand at the foot of the cross. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I am a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have never offended you, and you have deserved your temporal and punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you with your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy innocent bitter suffering and death. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 
Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart, in the company of the upright, in the congregation. Great is the Lord, shall be by all who delight in him. Full of splendor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. are new every morning, and though we deserve only punishment, you receive us as your children and provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant that we may heartily acknowledge your merciful goodness, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. may be seated. Have the children come forward for a children's message. And yes, I know we're shy of few children. The three, my three youngest of mine are all sick today, so. Yeah. All right, so. Spring break. Yeah, and their spring break happened, yeah. So I've got a question for you guys. Nope. So here's my question. Who is your favorite superhero? Who? <laughs> Superman? Um, Batgirl. Batgirl? <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. You know, I've got a question about your answer, though. Does he look very super in that picture? Yeah? Really? I bet you he can't even roll over. Um. <laughs> Newborn Jesus. I bet you he can't even roll over, and you think he's a superhero? Yeah, well... He's a baby, 
a baby superhero is gonna be. You know, interestingly enough, you know, interestingly enough, Jesus, when he was born, was just as powerful of a superhero as here. When he went to the cross. Yeah. You know what? When Jesus was born, yeah, he he was born a man, and it doesn't look real powerful. But he is just as much true God in this picture as he is true God in this picture with him on the cross. He has more than magic. Magic is kind of trying to manipulate the things that exist. He doesn't even have to have things that exist because he created existence, right? And so, so listen, why then would a God who can create all existence, can literally save us from ourselves and our own sins, why would he show up as a little baby that can't even roll over? to show that he's humble. What's another way of understanding humble? What does it mean if someone's humble? Do you know, Turner? No? It means that they, that they don't appear like they're very important or powerful. It means that they are almost kind of weak. You know what? When Jesus was born and when he went to the cross, we look at that and we say, well, that's doesn't look that nice, that doesn't look that good, that kind of appears like he's kind of weak. But you know, God's weakness is stronger than our strength. Even when we try our hardest, we still mess up and fail. We still disobey our parents. We still do things we're not supposed to. But even in God's weakest moments, when he was born and when he was crucified for us, he was still more powerful than even Superman. What? Yeah. <laughs> Didn't need any gadgets. He was God. Or is God. Okay? And so think about that as we go through our, our uh, service today. That what we think of as weak or foolish, God actually used to display his power. Okay? Let us pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for showing your weakness so that we may see your power. Help us to give thanks and praise to you, our God, our, God, our, Savior, our Savior, and the Word of the Cross. In your name we pray. And all God's children said, Amen. Good job. All right, let's go ahead and sit back down, and we will sing our next hymn.
Good morning. Uh, one of the kids asked, Jesus, God has any gadgets? I don't know which one you guys. That was a good question. <laughs> Quite a few gadgets to help us if we just use them. Uh, our first reading. Now that I'm on my soapbox, I'll find it. Old Testament readings from Isaiah 55, 8 through 11. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty. But it shall accomplish that which I purpose. I shall succeed in the thing for which I sent. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Amen. Our epistle readings from 1 Corinthians um, 18, 1, 18 through 25. The word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God the world did not know God through wisdom, it pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews and folly to the Gentiles. But to, the, but to those who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Please stand in honor of God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, you are a hindrance to me, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We now join together in confessing our faith as uh, said as is worded in the Apostles' Creed, which is printed on the bottom of page 6 of your bulletin. When someone asks what you believe, you can respond by saying, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated, and children are dismissed for Children's Church at this time. Are you? Okay. Yeah, we'll continue by singing the Father's Purpose. <laughs>
Grace to peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I want you to visualize in your minds, if you will, think about power. Think about people in power in our world today. Who comes to mind? <laughs> Are you picturing the current or perhaps maybe even a past president of the United States? Queen of England. Queen of England, yeah. Are you picturing maybe a businessman or a technological genius, an inventor worth billions? Or are you picturing a military general, maybe before or after leading a successful campaign? Or are you picturing a tyrant, a foreign president or dictator who rules, by his, rules his own people by fear and threatens or commits war against neighboring nations? If you pictured any one of these people, or perhaps many similar others, then you're not wrong. All of these people represent real power in our world. Yes. Each of them wields a different kind of power. Uh, power maybe backed by armies and influence by wealth and property, or by warfare. But all of them truly do represent power in our world. Now look at this. Look at the cross. You know what it represents. I know what it represents. We know because the Apostle Paul says in our epistle, rest, in our epistle lesson today that the cross is the power of God. You and I know the story behind the cross. It represents the power of God in accomplishing our salvation through the death of Jesus Christ. We know that it represents this for our lives and for the lives of Christians throughout time. But the rest of the world doesn't know this. The unbelieving world does not know the story, or perhaps they know, but they don't believe the story. And they decide to reject the cross and all that it represents. This cross word, this word of the cross is folly. It's a foolishness to those who are perishing. To the world, the cross is a scandal, a stumbling block that must be ignored, or if it can't be ignored, it must be explained away. Interestingly enough, the earliest known form of Christian artwork is actually a piece of graffiti where someone was actually making fun of Christians who worshipped this donkey on a cross as they saw it. A humble king who died. And so they made fun of that. Sometimes people of other religions, and sometimes even those who call themselves Christian theologians, try to explain away the cross. And in their explanations, they rob the cross of its power. They offer all sorts of theories about what the cross is and what it means. Some suggest that Jesus didn't even die on the cross at all, but that someone who just looked like him, maybe Judas or perhaps another disciple, took his place. Others admit that, yeah, Jesus really did die, but he only went to the cross because not because of his will or his father's will or his, or his father's desire to be our redeemer, but only because he rebelled against 
the Jews and the, the Romans and, and try to be Caesar. Or another popular theory touches upon the meaning of the cross or on the idea of power at least, but suggests that Jesus died only to show solidarity with those who are downtrodden and poor. That his death didn't mean anything but showing love overcomes power. Others of those, some even consider themselves Christians, are offended by the idea of the bloody sacrifice of God's Son. They can't imagine anyone in this scientific day and age could accept the idea of a blood sacrifice. The shedding of blood, at least to them, is terribly outdated thinking. To others, the word of the cross, the cross word, is foolishness because they can't imagine that this one act would be sufficient to atone for the sins of the whole world. How could a death, especially a death of just one man, save anyone? Even Peter, in our gospel reading today, didn't understand Jesus' cross word at first. He even took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him and saying, Far be it from you, Lord! Instead, Jesus rebuked him so that he could teach Peter and all the future disciples and apostles about the power of the cross word. Which is why Christ sent Paul to confront and challenge those worldly opinions about the cross word as he asks, where is the debater of this age? Has God not made foolish the wisdom of the world? You see, all the wisdom of the world cannot figure out or make sense of what God has done in Jesus Christ. Through the prophet Isaiah, God even said, My thoughts are not your thoughts, and neither are your ways my ways. God, he does not do things the way we think he should. In fact, he doesn't even do things the way we think he would. But all the same, God says, what God says happens. He sent his word, his son, the word made flesh. The word accomplished the purpose for which it was sent, the plan of his father. To the world, this is just foolishness, that God would become a little baby, and much less that that child then should grow up and die on a cross. But this word of the cross, to us who are being saved, is the power of God. You see, the word of the cross is the saving word. We preach Christ crucified, and yes, it was a sacrifice of blood. It was a bloody mess. Kind of like the sacrifices of the Old Testament, as they pointed ahead to the Lamb of God who would die to take away the sins of the world. For the wages of sin is death, Paul says in Romans 6. Death is the penalty for sin. And Jesus suffered that penalty in our place. Long before the Messiah came to earth as the incarnate Word of God, Moses asked to see God's glory but God replied, you cannot see my face, for man shall not see me and live. Instead, God pressed Moses against a space in a rock and covered him there, allowing Moses to see only God's back, to catch a glimpse of God's passing glory. Like Moses, we often want to see the glory of God at work in our lives. We think we should have a life free of pain and trouble. We think that God should take away all our problems. Then, 
we imagine, we would really see God, see the glory of God revealed. But the glory of God, as Paul already explained to us, is revealed in weakness. When Paul asked God to remove his thorn in the flesh, which was some physical or maybe spiritual ailment which he suffered, God didn't heal him. Instead, he told Paul, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Think about that. When we are at our weakest is when God shines the brightest. How many people in your lives, or maybe in your life itself, have hit rock bottom so that they could see God revealed? The glory of God, as Paul knew, is revealed in weakness. Grace in suffering and power made perfect in weakness. God's ways are not our ways. Do you want to see the glory of God? Then look to the cross and the empty tomb. Do you want to see God at work in your life? Then look to the cross and the empty tomb. That's the ultimate answer. That is where we will see power. Power beyond presidents, businessmen, generals, and even tyrants. Power beyond the world and all of this broken creation. That is where you see the cross word. Jesus on the cross for you and for all of creation. Look to the cross word. Christ crucified and risen. In him you will see the wisdom and the glory of God revealed for your salvation. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. We now worship God with our tithes and offering, and as we bring them forward, we rise and sing the third verse of the Father's Prayer. Please stand. Thank you. now go to the foot of the cross as we pray together in the prayer of the church. I'll end each petition with the words, God of grace, and you can respond by saying, your strength is made perfect in our weakness. Christ crucified, the power of God for our salvation, was revealed in the weakness of the cross. God of grace. Christ crucified, keep us faithful in our proclamation of your death and resurrection. Work through us by the power of your Spirit so that others will come to trust in you, the crucified and risen Lord, for their salvation. God of grace. Christ crucified, guard your people against the sins of this world. Grant that our homes would be modeled after your sacrificial love. Husband and wife would show respect to each other, and that our family of Christ would live in truth and grace. God of grace. Christ crucified, you establish justice by your law written on our hearts and the hearts of all people. Grant clarity and vision to the leaders of our nation, state, and local agencies, so that they might see your law on their hearts. Set their minds on the things of God, so that they might rule justly according to your will. God of grace. Amen. 
Christ crucified, give hope and peace to the people of Ukraine and protection to those seeking a means of escape during this troubling time. Bring peace and healing throughout this region. Grant wisdom and love to the leaders of all the countries involved in this conflict that your ways would be restored. God of grace. Christ crucified. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are your ways higher than our ways, and your thoughts higher than our thoughts. By your ways and by your thoughts, deliver these, our friends and family, who are in need of healing and comfort. Especially we pray for Lolita Olston, Terry Blackwell, Ed Bonds, William Bowers, Bill Bust, Jerry Henneman, Trudy Hoyman, Richard Gentles, Mary Mahaffey, Max, Beth McCabe, Paul and Carol McCall, Carmen Miller, Casey Pogue, Kylie Pontine, Andy Ruggles, Levi, Isaac, and Esther Sheely, Shirley Slopelt, Ron Sela, Clark Spalsberry, Scott Spindler, Bill Whithands, and the family and friends of Larry Henman who passed away recently. God of grace. Christ crucified. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and bringing it, making it bring forth and sprout. So shall your word and blessing be that go out from your mouth. We give you thanks, especially for Martin Bronlick, Gail Bernison, Mark Lewis, and Lee Marchbanks, as well as Brooke Picray, who have all received healing recently. God of grace. Christ crucified, graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us, for to you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> Boldly and confidently, we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> Continue with M422. spare your only Son, but delivered him up for us to bear our sins on the cross. Grant that our hearts may be so fixed with steadfast faith in him that we fear not the power of sin, death, and the devil. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
For this purpose, Christ came, and for this purpose, he died, to bring salvation to all. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. May we see it as we sing together verses 3 and 4 of hymn 451, Stricken, Smitten, and Afflicted. Thank you for joining me in a little bit of foolishness. As we do recognize the, the reality of the foolishness of Jesus dying for our sins, and yet the even greater reality of God's power to slay for all of us and all of creation, that he would restore and pay the penalty of sin. Amen. We do have uh, many announcements today. I'm not going to read them all, but so please take time because it's actually like almost two full pages of announcements. As we get closer and closer to Easter, it just keeps building up. Um, one thing, though, for today, we are having choir and fellowship uh, as well as Bible study following the service. We also have in the fellowship hall right now a book fair for the preschool. And uh, Jackie's is going to be back there. If you have any purchases you'd like to make, she's got all the apps and how to do that. So just talk with her and she'd be more than happy to, to help you support the preschool in that way. Uh, speaking of supporting, our National Youth Gathering is coming up this summer, and so the youth group continue their fundraising efforts. Uh, the upcoming fundraiser will be April 6th. We're going to be doing a taco dinner, and so we're looking for desserts that we can auction off and for people to attend. And if you can't attend or, or do a dessert, or maybe you want to just do all three, we're also accepting direct donations. And so please uh, help and support us as we uh, go forward in, the, in that uh, in that effort. Effort. The Holy Week schedule that is printed for you in your bulletin is in a couple of places. You'll notice that you have a nice colored thing that looks like maybe it should go upside down. 
that maybe you should go on a refrigerator or something? Well, like usual, it's not for you. It's for your neighbor. It's for your friend. It's for your family member. The one that's for you is this black and white one in the bulletin. Okay? So you can have that one, and please give this one away and give it to someone else to put on their fridge and invite them. Say, hey, I'll meet you, and we'll join together in celebration of our risen Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. And so, again, this is not for you. This is for your neighbor. That's why it's in color. That's why we're making it look pretty. Okay? Not that I don't love you. It's that I expect you to be here, and it's your neighbor that I don't expect. So we need to encourage them, right? Uh, with that, though, we, any other announcements? Sorry. Yes. Just wanted to say thank you to all of you who contributed towards the support for systems being affected by the war in Ukraine and also for your prayers. We'll be sending that money off early this week, like tomorrow or Tuesday. So today is still a chance if you want to drop a check or some cash in the basket at the door and we'll be on the fellowship table. We'll get off to Lutheran World Relief then Monday or Tuesday. Thank you. Thank you. Any other announcements? Do we have some guests or visitors who'd like to introduce themselves today? <coughs> no? All right. Well, join us in the back in the fellowship hall as we celebrate the fellowship that Christ has given us in the foolishness of the cross. Amen. Amen. <laughs> okay.